So we are part of the um, engineering team. But let's say we have kind of uh, social skills, so we are able to speak in public um, easily. So, um, and uh, basically I reach shout that it is for uh, developers in different countries, Spain, Portugal, Netherlands, uh, Finland, uh, Norway, uh, Sweden, and a bunch of them in, in, in Europe. And what we did is, uh, during the last uh, couple of years, was uh, uh, basically trying to foster the development of the communities uh, in, in this region, trying to connect the different people from uh, different countries and from different segments of the <coughs> So basically, we do um, activities with the developer communities, but also uh, we do uh, activities with the startups, with uh, uh, secondary and primary schools uh, students, and also with big companies. Uh, we connect people from the ecosystem, uh, from the several teams, and we try to uh, foster this, uh, the development of the uh, technical uh, communities, uh, technological ecosystem, in order to get more uh, you know, businesses, more training, more, uh, at the end, better development. Okay. So um, I'm here today uh, to present the new release of Firebase, uh, where we were trying to connect basically uh, technical staff with uh, all the things related with uh, um, the development of the mobile application. Because uh, one of the important things to consider is that uh, developing successful apps is, is hard, is difficult. From my point of view, it's not that difficult because technology, because uh, I think that right now the different platforms are uh, kind of similar in terms of uh, feature, so more or less you are able to develop the same uh, kind of things using uh, iOS or Android. But uh, it's also difficult because at the end we saw a kind of a new situation with the uh, mobile application ecosystem. In one hand, we saw how uh, our businesses for application on the on the um, desktop uh, solution were uh, migrating to this new platform in a kind of a engineering process and that was more or less fine. So it, it was uh, that hard because uh, at the end it was a kind of market with the same customer but we saw also how a new kind of ecosystem of people developing application uh, in the new app store so the people were publishing um, new stuff and trying to get money from that. And that was particularly, really fun. So let me show you some slide that I got from uh, Vision uh, Mobile Report in order to show you uh, the main reason to say that uh, getting money from uh, uh, application is, is really hard. You have there uh, a lot of information, but basically in, the, in your left hand, you have a, a graph where you can see uh, how the people get money uh, at the different segment of income. So in particular, red is bad and green is good. So if you add up, um, if you sum up all of the red uh, slides, you get something like a 70 percent uh, of the people get less than 1,000 uh, dollar per app per month. So basically, that means. That, uh, there is a big bunch of uh, people that are not able to get money enough to create a business on top of this uh, mobile uh, application. This is a report that Visual Mobile did in the end of 2014. So it's, well, uh, it's not that new, but uh, at the end I think the situation probably is uh, right now is the same. They were gathering data from a sample of the 10,000 developers from all over the world but mostly from Europe and US, okay? So a lot of people uh, don't get money enough to run their own businesses on top of the um, activities developing mobile application. But even uh, worse, you have their um, very impact um, data related with the, uh, how the incomes uh, are concentrated in a very small bunch of people. So almost, 2% of the developer get uh, the same amount of money that the other rest, like the uh, 8%. So this is very typical in the digital businesses, because 
compression that you get when you develop with uh, no cost for distribution and no cost for uh, creating new replica of your application. So this is very, very common, but at the end, uh, what you can see here is that when we say that it's difficult to get money to get successful application for this kind of uh, businesses, it's because it's true. Okay? So trying to see what might be the reason of this situation, uh, let me show you another uh, slide from this presentation. It's really interesting, this company, you can get uh, this report uh, for free. Uh, basically registering your um, email address on the website. But what you can see here is uh, there are a lot of tools no, that a successful that. developer used to uh, complement uh, their activities. And most of these tools are not related with technology. You have uh, a network, you have a backend, you have push notification, push uh, platform uh, tools, user analytics, store analytics. So at the end, uh, there are a lot of new tools that you can use uh, in order to improve the success of your application. You just you take a look here. Um, for those developers using more than 10 of those tools, uh, they get, um, you know, the green part is bigger, okay? In the other side, for those developers using none of these tools, most of the, mostly 70% of them don't get money enough to, uh, to live on these differences, okay? So at the end, this means that there is a kind of connection among using tools uh, for development, for uh, consistency, for distribution of the application, for connecting with the audience, there is some kind of connection and the, the, the idea of getting money from the, the uh, mobile development. Okay? So the only thing is that, uh, well, probably is, uh, the learner is, uh, is not big enough, but there are many of different tools. So at the end, you are gathering information about user analytics, about store analytics, but all these data um, uh, information systems are different. So there is a kind of fragmentation about the, the way that you get the uh, feedback and information about the activities of your application of your user using your application. Okay. So with all this in mind, um, I'm going to show you what was the first release of Firebase. I'm not sure you know about this this tool, but basically the idea was um, to provide what uh, is called backend as a service. Backend as a service is an idea connected with the latest net of the developers, so the developer don't like to do um, uh, things. Basically, they prefer to stay doing other stuff, or uh, creating complex uh, solution with a very complex uh, um, uh, tool. So uh, maybe two years ago, what we started to show was a kind of uh, new movement of people using backend as a service. It was a concept of a backend but uh, concentrated a very small bunch of different services providing very basic stuff. Basically, what we provide with Firebase was a real-time database. Real-time, in that case, uh, doesn't mean that you can use this for, um, you know, for a play or for a um, nuclear central, this kind of things. It's just uh, uh, the idea that you can share the information in the low latency process. But basically, we use the, the, the term real time database as a core of this backend as a service. The second service was a kind of uh, authentication system that uh, allow you to customize the service that you provide to your uh, user because you know who they are. Okay. And finally, we uh, provide also what we call a static content. It was a very simple way to deliver a static content to the, uh, to the user mostly for web applications where they have the logic, they have the, uh, you know, the core of the interaction with the user in the front end, okay? So um, at that time, probably, uh, they were a bunch of these uh, backend as a service and was a very popular idea, okay? So it was that popular that after, uh, I think it was one year or something like that, Google bought the company, and after two years and a half, um, we got something like uh, 450,000 developers using the application, using the uh, framework. Okay. So in the last uh, Google I.O. Uh, uh, one month ago, we 
we uh, present a new um, file base, basically connecting all of these APIs. So it was a backend as a service, but we were considering how to help the user, the developer, to make more successful their application. Okay. So what we did basically was to uh, expand uh, the three core um, services uh, with a bunch of new services providing ad quality um, solution or support, and um, with a bunch of new services providing uh, support for acquisition activities and engagement, and finally, uh, a kind of extra services to implement uh, in a but more important than providing all these uh, services together, what we did was to integrate all of this information with a new uh, implementation of analytics. Okay, so you know that we have uh, a lot of experience on the analytics uh, support, so we have a very huge uh, solution for, um, for analytics, probably is, uh, is uh, too bigger. Because uh, in that case, what we did was a kind of a new approach for analytics in order to connect different pieces of the uh, framework in order to provide a 360 uh, view of the different uh, services. Okay? So, um, in general, number of services, what we got was uh, these three uh, services funded with all of these. Okay? So I'm going to give you more information about the different services, but basically what was the, the proposal for the Firebase 2.0. So obviously all of that uh, that we provide as a, you know, integrating in our own developer um, relation activities with good documentation, with support with developer flow, with uh, uh, code snippet, with a lot of events like this where we are presenting <coughs> new uh, technology and obviously uh, we are going to have more of this with code lab with uh, you know a kind of a specific uh, talk about the specific services in the next uh, coming uh, month. Okay, so another important uh, feature of the platform is that uh, we offer all of this for iOS, for uh, Android, and for the web, all integrated in the same uh, SDK all of the services and again integrated in the same uh, analytic tool that allow you to have more information and avoiding this fragmentation on the different information systems that you get from the previous um, situation. Again, we did a new analytics tool connecting all together and uh, it was designed for apps, uh, tendering uh, uh, events and uh, user and uh, I think it's really interesting to know that it's free and I mean, so you can use that uh, as uh, you used to use um, Google Analytics, but in this new phrase. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about what is, uh, which are the main the feature of these uh, new services. But for those uh, that probably uh, don't know what was the initial proposal of uh, Firebase, let me break up a little bit the backend services that we provide from the beginning. The starting point was a kind of uh, authentication system. It was based on Open ID Connect, so it's a new standard using OAuth 2.0. Uh, obviously, you can use it to provide customized service for your uh, user, but uh, relying on email and password, and also relying on the social provider. At the end, you are uh, reducing the barriers you are using a more smooth way to integrate your user with, the, with your application. And uh, uh, we provide, uh, in this, uh, with this idea in mind, we provide a new UI that you can customize uh, to implement that kind of uh, smoother way to connect with your application. And in the case of you rely on the um, Firebase data system that uh, uh, store, you can use this as a configuration system for the Okay. So, uh, in addition to this, we have also a real-time database. It's not real real-time. It's a kind of a branding uh, definition. But what we're trying to say with this is that you have a low latency process to keep the coherence among your different instance, uh, among different users, among the different devices. So basically, this is a um, cloud host. It's not a SQL database. 
but you can use to implement the kind of uh, information system that are convenient from this uh, kind of uh, database. In that sense, it's very important to consider that if you have transactional information, if you have a relational model problem, uh, this database is not the best one to implement those kind of uh, solutions. So what the people is doing is trying to connect a different data model with the different technologies in order to take more uh, from the specific, uh, the specific uh, solution from the specific uh, uh, So you have to use this kind of uh, transactional information in addition to the basic uh, uh, information that you get from the, uh, the logs or from the events. Um, our recommendation is that probably you to connect with uh, Cloud SQL or with another um, um, relational database that is more um, convenient for this kind of solution. Otherwise, you might have kind of performance and pricing uh, issues because uh, this is something that uh, is convenient for non-relational database, but is probably for the best uh, solution for transaction uh, information. So uh, when we say real-time database, we are uh, trying to um, explain that uh, we are connecting the different instances, the different copies, the different uh, devices connecting to the cloud and keeping the clients even different um, um, copies of the uh, information in current using uh, a transparent way, a transparent algorithm that uh, provide this kind of uh, future um, manifold basically. Uh, in particular, it's really interesting to see how you can use this uh, uh, solution to keep the activity of your application even when you are offline. So, uh, Classical uh, example is that you are uh, you are using the application with a, uh, adding more information. So at the time probably you are not connecting, but you get a connection. Uh, all of the replicas get updated with the proper details. Okay. So uh, and again, this is something that you get in a transparent way. You don't have to take care of this. Uh, all of this information is uh, hosted in our cloud using our PDM. Uh, so I think that this is something that you get for free, let's say. Um, maybe you use the Google Cloud. Uh, but it's really interesting because at the end you're going to have no latency solution, no latency um, experience with uh, your user, no matter where they are. Okay? And more important, uh, right now we are offering all this in a secure way with SSL. And uh, connecting with some movement that you can uh, see right now on the internet, we are offering this uh, uh, secure connection for your custom uh, domain. So this is something that you can find on other uh, movement, so it was a matter of time. But from now on, you can use it with a file based uh, uh, secure uh, connection for your custom domain. Um, so that this were the, the initial three services that we are offering with uh, um, with the Firebase, but uh, gathering some insight and feedback from those the developers that I mentioned before, we start to expand with extra services. So for many of these developers, uh, static hosting uh, wasn't enough, so if you need some time more uh, services to put the information, so what we did was integrate cloud storage with the SDK. So this time you can use the uh, static hosting for um, your um, web application, but if you are running other kind of services, you can integrate the uh, cloud storage. At the end, again, uh, you have all of this in the same SDK, with the same console, with the same uh, uh, account, so it's easier for you to mix information, to blend all of this uh, data from different uh, services. So we use uh, this as a code for development, and, uh, but in some cases you need to, uh, you know, after development you need to try, you need to prepare your application, and uh, in that case we integrate what we call the Slack for Android, that is just a bunch of devices that you can use on our data center, that you can uh, define um, a script for testing, and you can create a report and a screenshot issue that the replication is ready for the majority of the different devices that you can get um, in your um, customer base. Sometimes after the distribution uh -huh. application you have still there are some bash that you need to get 
gather uh, information about polystyrene bronze. And uh, in that case, we have a cross reporting services that basically is a way to see what's happened uh, when something is going wrong with your uh, user. Try to see uh, if there is a kind of specific patch of user with problems or if you have a kind of uh, you know, specific situation where uh, the problem occurs. So we integrated analytics in order to uh, connect with the errors uh, services. And uh, this is something that, again, uh, is part of the app quality uh, services that we uh, include as a new uh, services for the new release of uh, Firebase. So after that, we put the focus on uh, what we call uh, growth. Uh, so the idea is just to support not only the technical activities that you do for uh, development, but also try to uh, provide support for um, other activities that allow you to uh, improve the market fit for your application. So you are going to um, define strategies to see um, if you can increase your customer base or you can engage with them in a better way just to um, make your funnel bigger or increase your lifetime value for your user. So in that sense, we have two different categories, acquisition and re-engagement. The first uh, one is based in a um, very uh, particular technology that we call dynamic links and allows you to connect from the URL to a specific uh, state in an application. So it's not just a way to connect uh, a URL with a store because what you can do is just with this kind of uh, uh, example, you can connect obviously with a store but at the end you have a very specific state where the, uh, in that case the challenger upper and connect with your application. Okay. So we call this uh, dynamic links and we will uh, we use this uh, basically in order to uh, increase your, your customer space but you can use also for uh, you know, uh, A-B testing or uh, implementing specific campaign in order to uh, connect with the uh, new audience using this kind of thing. In particular, what we did was try to use a very simple way to uh, implement those ideas with, with uh, something that we call invite. This is something uh, implemented on top of uh, dynamic links and uh, allow you to uh, create a kind of uh, you know, links among your um, uh, user, your current user, and the new one. Because what you can do is something like this. Just share and invite with your user, um, offering them some kind of extra discount or convenient uh, uh, new stuff, and asking them to share through their own channels in order to uh, get your new audience. So this is very simple, but at the end it was kind of a specific situation for dynamic things. Okay. So obviously you can use uh, the traditional uh, stuff for getting new audience. Uh, but in that case, uh, we call now uh, universal app campaigns, but it's a very simple idea that you can use right now in, uh, in our platform, but it's integrated also in Firebase. So it's just uh, a way to connect a specific batch of uh, uh, money that you want to spend for uh, promotion and the different channels that you can use to promote your application. So again, this is something that you were able uh, to use uh, for some time ago, but now it's integrated so regarding engagement, uh, you have also a vehicle uh, what we call app indexing. It's a way to connect uh, organic search with the uh, app content. So it was a very easy way to you know, uh, allow your user or current user mainly to um, get some kind of uh, re-engagement activities through your channel but based on uh, organic share. So in that case, again, the idea is that uh, you are going to um, increase the time that your user spends using your application through this kind of uh, technology. But more than that, um, what we did for this new release of Firebase was to uh, connect the Google Cloud messages. And again, it's a process that you can use for notification. Uh, but now it's under the uh, SDK of uh, Firebase. Uh, so you can implement the 
the same things that you did before, but using Firebase for uh, cross-platform and uh, all the different um, activities that allow you to uh, create the engagement and the like and value of your user. Very interesting feature in that case is that you can use this without no coding. So there is a console that you can uh, use to define interaction with your uh, user. Yes, a kind of uh, you know, uh, very simple interface to uh, interact, to uh, connect with your user. Um, because it's faster, uh, it's an uh, easy way to try things before to start coding and integrating in the application. So again, um, the, the idea of you know, this new release is trying to support your activities for engagement and for organization. So um, this is something, um, again, in the case of notification, is really interesting because um, you can define all of this and be testing without no problem. And finally, um, we have another uh, category of uh, services that also is very well known because you already have the chance to use ad hoc in your application. But in that case, again, it's integrated with the uh, Firebase SDK. So um, all of that uh, is connected to analytics, and you have just one console. You can use this kind of uh, activities to implement the uh, premium business model, uh, but probably um, another interesting aspect to consider is that uh, right now you can get the information in from the ad mode uh, in a raw uh, way, and you can use your own CSS and your own uh, feed to integrate those specific contexts. So it's it not uh, the traditional plan. Square or rectangle that you get uh, in your application is sometimes really difficult to uh, make it appealing. So, for now, you can, uh, for instance, really gain a specific uh, user interface in a more appealing way. So, um, basically, you have all of this already in the Apple. It's uh, it was launched one month ago in Tokyo. So, uh, we extend the backend service with new uh, services for development. We complement that part with the actual services. Of course, and more important, we extend the uh, basic services uh, focused on uh, development with new one uh, connecting with uh, growth, acquisition and re-engagement, and monetization. Yeah. Again, a very important uh, aspect here is that all of that is connected with analytics. So at the end, you are going to have the same power that you have with all the tools that I showed before, but without the fragmentation and the information that you get um, with this kind of approach. You have very, you have kind of uh, three different levels of uh, um, pricing. There's a very interesting uh, premium model, so you can do all this feature for free. Mostly, I think that the only thing that is not included is uh, uh, the quality services. And a couple of uh, price or paid uh, layer of, um, of price. Okay, but take a look on the uh, website and you can get the, uh, all of the information. Uh, it's very simple, it's uh, really straightforward to include in the uh, application. And um, we will prefer more activities with Hot Lab, with uh, uh, activities, statutory um, programming in order to do specific sounds, but it's really, really, really simple. You have a snippet, you have all that, so you can try to find all this. So if you have any question, maybe we have some time to um, question right now, and you can get me on the Twitter.
really simple uh, the, uh, uh, the framework. So you haven't tried it yet. Uh, I think it's important so to get the power of all these ideas. And uh, I'm really happy to hear some feedback on this specific application. Thank you. 